Hello everybody, welcome back to Sealess. I am Zach Peterson and I'm very happy to be talking to you all today about the very cool Nordic semiconductor solutions that you will find in the Sealess platform. Today we are going to be looking at the NRF 7002 Wi-Fi edition. Now this Wi-Fi chip is an add-on to pretty much any MCU that doesn't currently include Wi-Fi capabilities. You can use this chip as an add-on to add Wi-Fi capabilities to your system. And it's a great addition to the NRF52 or NRF53 because then you can have a system that has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. We're gonna run over what is on this component. We're gonna look at how to use the component both from the circuit perspective and the PCB perspective. And then I'll show you how to access the NRF 7002 inside Sealess. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you look around the internet for production grade or industrial grade uh, MCUs, you tend to find a lot of stuff that has either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, not a lot of components that have both. Now, one thing that you can do if you have, for example, a microcontroller that only has Bluetooth, you can add a companion IC that provides Wi-Fi. And that is exactly what the NRF 7002 is. Now, the NRF 7002 is actually part of a series. There is the NRF 7000, 7001, and 7002. So let's take a look at the Nordic website and we can see how they recommend using this and what they intended with this chip. They describe this as a companion IC. And essentially it's basically an add-on to an existing microcontroller or a microprocessor or an FPGA that then gives that system Wi-Fi capabilities. This type of component is very nice and convenient because it contains most of that RF front end circuitry and then you only need to add in some passives around the periphery to provide power. Now this particular companion IC, as I mentioned, comes in three flavors. There's the NRF 7000, 7001, and 7002. And you can see that they mainly differ in terms of the Wi-Fi capability that they offer. Here, the 7000 offers all three Wi-Fi 6, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5 gigahertz, and then the 7002 offers the same. The 7002 offers some additional features as well. Um, the only difference here is that the 7001 does not offer 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now, one big differentiator here is the package. You can see here in this table that the package options are QFN and then something else called WLCSP. Now, if you're familiar with HDI PCB design, you'll probably know what WLCSP stands for. That stands for Wafer Level Chip Scale Packaging. And basically, wafer level chip scale packaging looks kind of like what we have here on screen on the Nordic website. You can see here that this is a BGA package. It's a very small BGA package at 3.4 millimeters by 3.8 millimeters. And this is the type of thing that you would add to a device when you want to maintain the smallest possible footprint. Now, Nordic does offer some layout guidance with this product, but they only offer it for the QFN. So if you go down here to the downloads section, you'll be able to find a reference layout. And they'll give you the Altium files that shows you the reference layout for the QFN package. So you can see here inside Altium, I have this pulled up. And they've basically given you a section of a layout that you could conceivably copy into your own PCB and then finish out that PCB layout. So I think this is okay to use as guidance. You probably can't copy and paste this into every system that you want to build, but it's nice because it shows you some ways you can lay out the components that you need to make this chip work. Now this is just the QFN package. What do the wafer level chip scale packages look like? Well, I have another project pulled up here where we used the NRF52 in the wafer level chip scale package, and you can see that here on screen. Now, this particular package is a very fine pitch BGA. In fact, if I just measure the distance between these balls, you can see here that the distance is 0.35 millimeters. So that's a pretty fine pitch BGA. And that BGA is such fine pitch that if you want to use vias to get into the inner layers, which you will have to do, um, you really have no choice but to do via in pad, most likely micro via in pad, especially on some of these outer balls. You could probably do it with mechanical drilling, but it's going to be pretty difficult, especially trying to do through hole drilling. So if you are going to design a system that uses the chip scale package, just be aware of the PCB design practices that you'll have to implement. 
if you're not comfortable doing HDI design or you don't know how to do it um, or you don't know how to talk to manufacturers who are going to produce the board, stick with the QFN. That QFN component is still pretty small. If you look up here in the QFN package, it's still six by six millimeters. So it still has a pretty small footprint and you can still build some pretty compact devices. Now, because the NRF 7002 is a Wi-Fi companion IC, it of course needs to connect to an antenna and you will need to design the antenna onto the PCB or you'll need to connect to it through like an SMA connector, could be a ceramic antenna, various ways to do this. There's some guidance for how to do that in the data sheet. Now what Nordic has done is they have very graciously set up some block diagrams inside the data sheet. And here we can see some of these in the functional description section. So here what I'm looking at is some of the block diagrams that shows how to use the NRF 7002. Now you have a host microcontroller. That microcontroller can connect to the NRF 7002. Here's the pin list that you need in order to do that. And then here on the output, they have the output for 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz going over to a diplexer. That diplexer is basically going to allow you to use two different RF sources with the same antenna. And that's what you see here in this block diagram. There's some other system variants that you can set up. You have an example here with the NRF53. Here with the NRF53, that one provides Bluetooth, and you can see that the NRF53 connects directly to a Bluetooth antenna. And then here you can see it connects to the NRF7002, then its outputs also go to the diplexer. That diplexer goes to the Wi-Fi antenna. Let's scroll down a little further, and we can see another way that we can use this type of system. Here in this uh, page, we can see that we have the NRF53 and the NRF7002 being used, but we have this other element here on the 2.4 gigahertz line. This element is an antenna switch. Now an antenna switch, it, it does exactly what it sounds like. It basically switches between two different RF inputs and then it has one RF output going to our diplexer and then that diplexer goes to a single antenna. So in this type of system architecture, you could use one antenna, which has to be a dual band antenna, so it can broadcast and receive at five gigahertz as well as 2.4 gigahertz. And then you can use that one antenna with these other components to then connect to your NRF 7002 and your NRF 53. Now, how does the microcontroller communicate with the NRF 7002? Well, it's a very simple QSPY or SPY interface. And you can see that here in the block diagram. And Nordic provides some developer resources that you can use to build a driver that's going to run the NRF 7002 in your system. So you're not gonna be left out working on all this stuff by yourself. You can get all of that stuff directly from the Nordic website. Now, how does all this stuff from Nordic compare to some other products that are out there on the market? Well, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with like ESP32. There are ESP32 modules that have the antenna section built in. They're pretty convenient. There are other products from other companies like Microchip and Texas Instruments. And what I have here is one Wi-Fi module from, from Texas Instruments that I have used in several different projects. So this Wi-Fi module, it comes with all, all of the RF front end and microcontroller circuitry built into this package. You can see it's an LGA package. And this particular component then interfaces with an external antenna on your PCB. Um, there are also versions that have the antenna built onto the substrate. So this is the type of component where if you needed to add Bluetooth to this component, you would do it with a Bluetooth companion IC rather than a Wi-Fi companion IC. So the system architecture is comparable to what you would find with other components. I think the really big differentiator for Nordic is that with these Nordic components, they're available in that chip scale package. So both of the Nordic components, the NRF 7002 and one of the microcontrollers like the NRF 52 or the NRF 53, both of those components together are already much smaller than this Wi-Fi module from Texas Instruments. So if you're trying to build something that has really small footprint, really compact form factor, definitely the Nordic components are the way to go. So far, we've presented how to get started with the Nordic NRF 7002, but of course, if you're gonna build a real product that uses this component, it's going to have to integrate with a lot of other stuff on a circuit board, and you will need schematics. I think one of the fastest ways to create schematics for a new system that uses this type of component is, of course, to use Sealess. So if you go to Sealess.io, create a free account, you can access some featured projects that include the NRF 7002. And you can see here on screen, we have 
one project here in the lower right. This is the NRF 7002 hat for an Arduino Uno. So if you want to use this project for yourself, just go ahead and click that copy project button. You can then get an instance of this project loaded up in your dashboard and you see here it's already opened. Now there are some recommendations for components that we can add. When we look here in the design, we can see some existing components. We have some headers that would then connect to the Arduino Uno. We have some DC-DC conversion here to give us our power supply. We have an LED for an indicator, and then we have our connections pre-made here. Now, if we want to add something new, like for example, a micro SD card, that's very simple. We just drag it in here uh, into the design canvas. We're going to create a new connection, and then we can connect that over to our pin header, for example. So I'm going to create this connection right here for our micro SD card, draw it over, and there we go. We have that connection for our micro SD card. Once this is added in, we can click the resolve button and the AI that runs Sealess is going to figure out the connections that are required between the micro SD card and our pin headers and that's it. It will then give you some options to select specific micro SD card part numbers and then you can finish building out your system. So I've let the project run and now you can see here that we have successfully finished resolving. We have some Kubos that we can add in for this uh, micro SD card. If I right click and select Kubo, you'll see here that it gives me a set of circuits for this micro SD card that will be, of course, compatible with pin headers. That's not too hard to do because, of course, we're just running some data lines over to pin headers. But you see here, all of that circuitry is pre-made and it's very easy to simply just add it right in to my project. So I'm going to lock in one of these Kubos. I'm going to hit lock. We're going to go back to the design canvas and we can keep working on our design. Now you can go through the list of blocks here and you can keep adding new stuff to your design to your heart's content. And you can keep hitting that resolve button up at the top of the screen and the AI is going to go through and find ways to match up your blocks to the existing components in your design. And then eventually when you're done, you can output your files in your favorite ECAD format. You'll notice here that we had Altium files when we were looking at the Kubo. That's very convenient because of course, Nordic provides all of their development files in Altium format. So you've got a really quick and easy way to get into an Altium project and then create a custom PCB for your product. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. You will be able to keep up with all of these great Sealess tutorials as they're released. And of course, go over to Sealess.io, create a free account, and you can access all of the great components that we're showing in these tutorials. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time.